Welcome to Modern Aikido's podcast. I'd like to give a special thanks to all of you who have given me the great feedback you have about these podcasts. Much of it has been through private messages, and I'm humbled by the comments that you're enjoying these episodes. It's wonderful to hear that what I'm sharing is having such a positive impact on your growth. Thank you so much. A couple of podcasts ago, I mentioned that YouTube is drastically changing its policies. Evidently, these policy changes go into effect on December 10th in just a few weeks. Channels which are not commercially viable may be terminated. My channel, which is too small to qualify for monetization and run advertisements, may be terminated without notice. Don't worry, the podcast will still be coming out through the podcasting services such as iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, etc. I'm also looking into other video platform options. I'll keep you updated to any changes. In today's podcast, I'm going to cover the fundamentals every martial art practitioner needs to know about themselves. Why do you train, and what benefits are you looking for in your training? The purpose is not to provide answers for you, only you can do that. However, a great deal of the ill feeling about Aikido and martial arts in general seems to be centered around whether it will turn you into a champion fighter or not. The short answer is no, of course it won't. But is that what you're in martial arts training for? I think very few people who train martial arts or martial sports have such a goal. Let's explore this idea. It is tempting to look at martial arts as a simple spectrum, from low skill and ability to extremely high. Let's say a newbie white belt is on the bottom, someone who has no skills whatsoever. At the other end of the spectrum is, say, John Jones. Jones is the current light heavyweight UFC champion. It's fair to say that Jones is in his prime. One could probably argue that, but let's go with that for now. When looking at this spectrum, a martial artist might consider every other martial artist and fighter to be ranked from bottom to top, kind of like tennis players or chess players. While there are no such ratings for martial artists, it's tempting to think in terms of needing to train to be higher on that non-existent list than you are now. You train to be more powerful, so theoretically you can win more fights than you lose. There's a serious problem with looking at martial arts training this way, which should be fairly obvious. Unfortunately, the ego wants to lure us into thinking this way, and it often succeeds. There is an ingrained part of our nature, especially with males, to size each other up. It's a natural protection mechanism related to both power and survival, so it's deep within our programming, and that's not going anywhere anytime soon. The difficult part comes in when those of us who have jobs, families, and other responsibilities cannot devote the kind of training that someone like John Jones does. If you want to be a world champion, you must dedicate yourself fully to your training. You are spending a majority of your waking hours on conditioning, strength training, agility training, form, and footwork training, even diet and studying film of other competitors. This is at the pro level. Can you support yourself and not have a job while you're doing this? Most cannot. Well, what about semi-pro and amateur fighters? Most of them have day jobs and train in their non-work time. What does life tend to look like for them? Their lives vary, obviously, but it likely includes getting up very early, doing an hour or two of conditioning before going to work, then going from work to the gym where they do as much training and conditioning as they can squeeze in before getting home and going to bed. They often do this every single day. Even training like this would not be enough for someone to likely succeed against a full-time training pro fighter. It isn't about which art they study, it's about the time spent conditioning and training. The simple fact is that someone who trains twice as long will be farther along in skill and ability than someone who has done only half as much. The same holds true for anything, playing guitar or piano, learning a language, making jewelry, anything. Here's where I come to the topic of the podcast. Where does this leave you, who is more than likely a fairly typical person who is not a pro or semi-pro fighter? You want to get some combination of benefits such as self-defense skills, exercise, improve your movement and balance, or even enjoy participating in the physical culture of martial arts. Only a fool would expect to be able to, with a couple of classes a week, even over the span of years, match up against even an amateur fighter and expect to prevail. Fans get into talking about matchups between pro competitors and tend to do the same thing with people who practice martial arts. They also imagine what their own odds would be against an attacker they envision from a self-defense scenario. This method of punditry has spilled over into talking about particular martial arts in exactly the same way. Which art is better, this one or that one? 
When you shop for a car or a new microwave, you look at the features to see which one is better so you can make a choice. Why not look at martial arts the same way? When shopping for which art to study, we have to figure out which one best suits our interests so this evaluation makes sense. It's natural to do this, but not necessarily an accurate or productive way to go about it. It's very difficult to break down one art versus another like you would compare one pickup truck to another, or compare one football team against another based on their performance statistics. There's a lot more to it than that. When looking at martial arts, especially as we try to pick which one would be best for us, we look at which is going to give the most bang for the buck. That's what we do every time we buy something or choose what activity we want to get involved in. Almost all martial arts have great things to offer. I say almost because there are a few martial arts instructors out there who have taken a good art and made something horrible with it. They do not instill skill, but are peddling gimmicks and nonsense which are made to appear practical or useful, but are not. Most arts have evolved over time to be highly specialized in a few areas and have excluded others. You need to pick out one which has the features that you're looking for. Sort of like when you go buy a car. Do you want a sporty car, a pickup truck, an SUV, or a compact car? Each will do pretty much the same thing, but there are some distinct differences between them. It really depends on what you want from them that will guide your decision. With martial arts, you may be limited in what is available in your area. Unfortunately, the martial arts market is not as widespread as the car market, and it's because there isn't as much demand. So what about martial arts training for people who have no interest in being even amateur fighters? The thing that I like about Aikido and martial arts training is that it allows you to engage your mind as well as your body while you get exercise. It is an exercise program that has a puzzle solving element too. To me, exercise for its own sake is mind-numbingly boring and tedious. Even watching TV while I do it doesn't help, and I don't think that I'm the only one who feels this way. On the other hand, the challenge of learning martial arts is extremely satisfying because I can improve physically and mentally at the same time. Training which includes work against live opponents builds the application of strategy as well, and is very enjoyable. Even if you only do this two or three times a week, you can get tremendous benefit out of it. Do it for a few years and you can build some very solid skills. You're not going to be much of a threat to John Jones, but you can get to the point where anyone who is not a trained fighter is going to have a very difficult time dominating you. You can vastly improve your chances of surviving a fight or a violent encounter. I think this is an important expectation to have. That is, you're not training to be a god of combat. You are training to be healthy, strong, and capable so you have the best chance to survive circumstances a real person might find themselves in. I'm not talking about surviving a stroll through a Baghdad slum or a prize fight. These are entirely different levels and types of threat that most people will never face. When talking about the spectrum, it's important to note that it's not a linear spectrum from bottom to top. There are different types of violence, too. The type of training sport fighters go through is vastly different than Marine Corps martial arts. There are so many differences that they are barely similar at all. As before, we are tempted to ask, which one's better? The answer is that they are designed to do drastically different things. I'm not talking about just the rules issue here either, although that does have a small role to play. Both professional sport fighters and professional soldiers train hard. There's no question about that. But they train to do different things. Both are very athletic and dangerous at what they do. Each dominates their own realm because that is what their art and training was designed for. A few years back, a group of MMA fighters visited a Marine Corps boot camp and faced some Marines in some friendly competition. It's been a few years since I've seen the video, but I seem to recall that when they took on the sport approach that the MMA fighters were used to, the Marines were outmatched. The tables turned when the MMA fighters were put through the scenarios that the Marines trained for. The MMA fighters didn't do very well, and they got overcome by the Marines pretty handily. It wasn't because the Marines used biting, eye gouging, or kicking the groin either. This is a common argument of the difference between real combat and sport fighting. The reality is the differences are more nuanced than merely using some illegal techniques. It's also interesting to note that the Marines did not injure the MMA fighters. They had the level of control of a true martial artist to overcome their opponent without having to kill or maim them. You can find this video on YouTube if you want to watch it. What the video never showed is the same Marines competing against the MMA fighters in a cage match. I would bet the Marines would not do very well because that's not what they were trained for. It is a mistake to face a specialist in their own game. 
That is what they do, and they are very likely better at it than you are. The reason being, they have done that exact thing a lot longer than you have and are more familiar with the nuances and intricacies of it than you are. Another fairly recent example was when Conor McGregor faced Floyd Mayweather. McGregor was a champion MMA fighter and Mayweather a retired heavyweight boxing champion. Both were in excellent condition, although Conor was younger and probably in better physical shape. However, the match was a boxing match where Floyd was a master. Conor had a much bigger repertoire, most of which was unavailable to him. The result was that Mayweather, a master strategist, essentially toyed with McGregor and beat him after outfoxing him. McGregor just didn't have the experience in that realm to match even a retired champion. Had the match been under MMA rules, I'm confident McGregor would have won just as handily, if not even more so. Getting back to our real-life practitioners, strength and conditioning does matter. These can mean the difference between survival and being beaten. Just like with the martial arts training itself, it comes down to how much can you fit into your schedule and still participate in the other activities you want to. I think the most important aspects to this side of your training has to do with fitness and health more than it does self-defense. A strong and healthy body is going to give you a higher standard of living overall, with not only fewer physical ailments, but also a far better mental outlook. There are many studies and testaments to the link between physical fitness and mental well-being. The benefits of martial arts training for real people are immense. They should not be marginalized because you won't be able to square off against a professional fighter and likely win. People seem to believe that some arts can provide this and they go searching for it, but such an art does not exist. It doesn't matter how badass the art looks or how impressive or amazing the instructor looks. A couple hours a week are not going to prepare you to deal with a professional fighter. Such an expectation is misplaced and false. To me, this is what martial arts training means for real people. You aren't expecting to become a cage fighter or a professional competitor, but you can build some excellent practical skills and improve your health and fitness in an enjoyable and engaging way. You will feel great with martial art training. Train with good guidance and you will also learn some great self-defense skills and enjoy tremendous confidence. You can learn solid self-defense skills with practicing a few hours per week. It will take some time to get skilled with them, but all complex skills are like that. Imagine it like learning a new language or playing a musical instrument. It will take years, not days or weeks. Enjoy the journey. It's very fulfilling. If you compare it to musicians, there are some guitar and piano players who practice in their spare time and are still very good at it. They won't outplay Eddie Van Halen, but they play good music all the same. What do you think? Please share your ideas in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube or go to the Facebook group Aikido the Marshall Side and post a comment. The Spirit Aikido online program is now live. Subscribers get access to video training and mentoring, to techniques and training methods that I've adopted from other martial arts to make my Aikido more practical. There's a link in the description section. I invite you to check it out. I always enjoy hearing from listeners of the show, whether through comments or questions. Thank you all for sharing your interest. Enjoy your training.